That was, of course, our very own Tiger Woods. Now, growing up in an increasingly complex world, young men and women need to take charge of their own financial futures. That is why financial literacy is an important core life skill for participating in modern society, an essential element for the youth. Financial literacy thus includes choosing the right financial products and often a lack of interest in undertaking sound financial planning. Now, as we gauge youth and their relationship with money, we're speaking to Mr. Fimana Keni Mbodo, a youth financial advocate this morning. Good morning, sir, and welcome to Good Morning Namibia. Um, thank you so much for having me back on the show so soon. We have alluded to some of the elements in the introduction, but which are the key obstacles experienced by the youth when it relates to money? I think when we, when, when we talk about uh, young people and money in Namibia, we have to be extremely important to understand the context. So what I mean by that is we're dealing in an economy that hasn't grown meaningfully since 2015. Uh, we're dealing with uh, one of the highest uh, youth unemployment rates, which is bordering 50%. And we also live in the second most unequal society uh, in the world, second only to our neighbor, South Africa. So when we're talking about young people uh, and money, especially over the last decade in Namibia, we have to provide that context that they're dealing with a very, very difficult macroeconomic environment. But when we zoom in a little bit more, we, we find uh, very, very definite symptoms of systematic failure. And what I, what I mean by that is, I'll give you an example. If you go into the informal settlements in uh, Vintuk and you ask people what they're most familiar with and you give them these two options, sports betting or uh, more traditional investment vehicles such as equity investments, more likely than not, those people are more um, exposed to sports betting. And then 10 or 15 years later down the line, we expect them to make sound financial decisions. So uh, that problem is then uh, an exposure problem where we haven't uh, ensured that all Namibians from all walks of life, regardless of race, regardless of gender, regardless of social and economic background, have access to quality financial education. Whose responsibility is that? Who's the we that you are referring to? Um, I think as, as uh, we have to look at it uh, from different perspectives. So at a household level, uh, the heads of households have to be responsible for that. Uh, so we have this age-old uh, uh, cautionary tale where, for example, I'll give you another example, is when you have young people who inherit money from uh, the deceased estate of, say, a parent. Mm. And then we, we like to emphasize this story uh, where they spend this money over a short period of time and a few years down the line they're struggling. And so it's easy to say that, uh, but we have to start looking at all the factors that go into that. And then also you have the financial services sector and, uh, and government. I think, I think it's not a problem for one person, to, for, for one group of people to solve. It's something we have to look at uh, wholesomely. If one has regard to the role of a head of a household under those circumstances, one has to be cognizant of the fact that you can only teach what you learned yourself. Mm. One of the bones of contention in our society relates to generational wealth. Mm. In fact, the creation thereof. So if we take what you shared with us earlier, that what we practice is what we were taught at home, mm. how is it possible for me to create generational wealth when my spending habits are perhaps the result of a generational curse? Um, so I think... Uh, even though you, we, I'll acknowledge the limitations that uh, some people are coming from uh, backgrounds where they, where they uh, haven't been speaking about finances, for example, openly, I think it's a, it's a cultural shift that needs to happen. Mm. Regardless of uh, how limited your knowledge is, if you encourage the conversations uh, at a household level, then I think you, you, give them, you give people some sort of foundations. Again, we have to create systems that ensure that all Namibians across the board have access to quality financial education, but there also has to be a cultural shift where we need to demystify and uh, destigmatize talking about money with uh, future gener generations, no matter how limited the, uh, the, the information that you may have. Encouraging the conversation encourages questions. And when, when, when those questions are asked and you don't have to the, the necessarily the answers to them, 
then that's where uh, systematic uh, uh, interventions come in, like ensuring that informal education this is something we emphasize. Mm. I suspect you're touching a very sensitive nerve now. You called for the destigmatization of conversations around money. Mm. What is the stigma all about? Uh, I think that's, that's uh, it, it's definitely going to vary from people to people. I think people have different reasons why they, they, they don't uh, uh, talk about money as freely with uh, younger generations as, as they should. I think a, a major one is, um, I think, uh, there have being a veil of, of, of secrecy around money somewhat, people feel that if they talk openly about money, uh, their children might not... Uh, it's a sensitive matter. For mm. example, if you, you're talking about earnings and, and what you have, I think a lot of people... Uh, their, their, their sense of self-confidence, for example, is, is tied to earnings and things like that. So, mm. But it's, 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 it's a conversation that, that, that hurts the, the younger generation going forward because, again, like we talked about earlier, you find these people that uh, come into large lump sums of money and they can't contextualize it in terms of earnings. So if you give someone a, a lump sum, let's say uh, 500000 all they see is that 500,000, but that's a culmination of years of work. Mm. But because you haven't been having these conversations, they won't contextualize it as 500,000 earned over uh, 20 years. They, they'll just see 500,000 earned in a day and, and their spending habits will reflect that. Mm. And as the heir, you didn't work for that money, so you, didn't, you don't know what sweat it took. Mm. Yeah. A absolutely. And in the, in the absence of fundamentals being taught, um, there is this, this conviction that whether you earn $5,000 and get an increase by five to 10, that you'll make the exactly the same mistakes unless you learn the fundamentals. Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Which are the fundamentals that the average person, particularly the average young person, needs to acquaint themselves with? So I think when, when we think about fundamentals, we have to think about, uh, I think one, the uh, course of someone's life and what they're likely to uh, encounter. Uh, and then when we think about it in that way, uh, savings is a major one. And, and, and when we talk about savings, a lot of the times, uh, a lot of people just think about uh, saving for uh, future planned expenditure, but uh, they, don't, they don't take into consideration the natural uncertainty that comes uh, with life. So we have to start thinking about sa savings, not only to, for future purchases, but also for uncertain events. Uh, another major one that I think uh, goes on the, the radar a little bit is uh, retirement planning, especially for people who aren't in formal employment. Mm. Um, so when you, ha you, you have formal employment, uh, that, that responsibility is somewhat taken away from you, but you have a large segment of the Namibian population that is self-employed. And uh, for those people, it's difficult to think about life uh, in a time where you're economically inactive. So you have Savings, retirement planning, medical aid is a, another, another major, major one where people come into events that, that, that where medical aid could be helpful, but because they haven't been planning or saving for it and they don't have access to those uh, products and they aren't exposed to them, then they find themselves in difficult situations. Uh, medical emergencies are one of the, the, the big, big uh, major financial events in, in people's lives that really could shake a person's life so you have that and then you have investments and taxation mm. yeah so investments are very very powerful in terms of luring people into the conversation of uh, financial education uh, people like the idea of generating a return on their money so if you want people to engage that conversation I think investments is a powerful powerful tool to get them mm. uh, having that conversation the ongoing COVID-19 pandemic has robbed us of not only lives but also livelihoods do you believe that financial literacy and at least being acquainted with the fundamentals is now more important than ever? Absolutely, without, without a, a shadow of a doubt, because um, what we observed when the, on the, in the onset of the COVID-19 pandemic was you had a lot of people who were suddenly unemployed or were unable to carry out a trade because of uh, the restrictions that came with COVID-19. And what happened uh, with these people, a lot of them, uh, try to uh, turn to uh, alternative methods of uh, generating an income. And a lot of these people were uh, the subjects of uh, pyramid schemes. Something mm. that we observe in Namibia very often is every single year we have successful pyramid schemes. And these, these are symptoms 
of, of, of a lack of financial literacy. And every, every year we take a hindsight approach where we condemn uh, things when people have already uh, lost their money. So if anything, it, it hasn't created a new need for financial education, but it has accelerated uh, uh, the urgency and as well as highlighted the unequal access. You have people who have, uh, who've gone to, for example, decent schools and things like that, and they've been exposed or at a household level, but you have a lot of people, the large majority of people, who are uh, susceptible to these schemes mm. because they haven't had any exposure. Any final thoughts this morning, please? Uh, so in my final thoughts, I just think we, we need to be more uh, ambitious as a, as, a, as a country in terms of uh, where we see ourselves, and we also have to be more caring. Just, I, it's an observation where a lot of people who have the information and who've been privileged enough to uh, have access to uh, certain resources and people and, and, and find themselves in a position where uh, they're financially literate, those people usually create these little silos of people like themselves. Mm. And then I, I'd like to just remind people that we're only as strong as, as, as all our neighbors. And uh, I think it's your responsibility then, if you're in a position to understand these things, to do as much as you can. I, I know for a fact uh, that we at Foster will, will be doing so. Thank you very much for sharing your time this morning and thank you for sharing your expertise. Thank you for having me. That was Youth Financial Advocate Pimana Kane in Bordeaux talking to us about matters of money, but also calling us to be more ambitious and at the same time more caring. We'll be right back after a brief break.